discussion that we've had thus far today is a peculiar one about decisions. And the assumption seems to be that you could make a different decision, for example, on August 31st, and everything would have been okay and we would have gotten more people out. My understanding, General Milley, is that it was your view that making that decision to go beyond August 31st, and I'm using this as an example, would have had consequences which you and your colleagues judged would be far more damaging and dangerous to American lives than the decision to leave on August 31st, including being back at war with the Taliban, subject to terrorist attacks, and subject to uh, perhaps airplanes being shot down by the Taliban. Can you, uh, am I right about this, about where the, the risk calculus was? That's correct, Senator. We said uh, risk to mission, risk to force, and risk to remaining American citizens in Afghanistan was going to go to extremely high beginning 1 September if we stayed past 31st with U.S. military forces. And, and you use that term risk to mission, risk to force as a kind of, that's a descriptive phrase, but we're talking about potentially hundreds of American lives, where are we not? Well, when we talk risk to force, we're specifically talking casualties killed and wounded. Uh, and our estimate, my estimate uh, at the time, this is 25 August we're talking about, is if we go to war with the Taliban on the 1st of September, there were 6,000 Taliban and 56 checkpoints in Kabul at that time. We would have had to clear Kabul. We would have had to reseize uh, Bagram in, uh, in the road, this 30 miles of road in between Bagram and Kabul. That would have taken a significant amount of force. We're looking at probably a core operation. We probably, my guess, is that we would have had significant amounts of killed and wounded. The exact numbers are always imprecise when you're doing those kinds of estimates, but it would have been significant U.S. military killed and wounded, and the remaining American citizens would have been at greater risk. You mentioned we'd have to have to retake in Kabul. They had 6,000 troops. As I remember discussions in this committee when we were talking about retaking Mosul, the generally accepted rule of thumb is that it takes 10 troops to dislodge one in, in a city, that dislodging troops in a city is very difficult and takes a large number of attacking troops. Is that correct? It is, but the disposition and composition of the Taliban in Kabul at that time was not the same as ISIS in Mosul. Mo Mosul was a prepared defense. Uh, they were dug in, they were ready to go, underground positions, et cetera. The Taliban had just moved in, so it would have been not that level of fight that you saw in Mosul, but it still would have been significant. 6,000 is 6,000, and you're in an urban area of about 5 million people. So it would have been a significant level of effort, and it would have resulted in significant U.S. casualties. Thank you. Uh, do you know, and I, I want to be clear on this, there was a deadline in the Doha Agreement of March 10th for the beginning of negotiations. Did the administration, the former administration, make any objections or raise problems with the Taliban because of their failure to meet that deadline or indeed to ever meet that deadline in terms of negotiations with the Afghan government? I don't have personal knowledge of that. I Zal Kalazade might be a good one, our former Secretary of State, uh, but I, I don't personally know. General McKenzie, uh, uh, I, I don't want to go over the same ground, but do you agree with General Milley that had we gone beyond August 31st, it, that decision wasn't just, oh, we're going to abandon Americans. It was if we leave, if we stay until uh, September 1st, we would have to make an additional troop commitment and our troops would be at risk. Is that correct? Senator, that, that's exactly correct. And actually, in the meeting in the tank with the JCS, I was the principal briefer who advanced that argument, and that does reflect my position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator uh, King.